pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The listing of matters on the agenda are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items, in fact, may be discussed, and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion <coughs> to the extent, the extent permitted by law. This meeting is being videotaped for cable. Um, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Maddie Olivier uh, tonight as our student representative. Hello. Thank you, Maddie. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd like to have a motion for uh, approval of the minutes from the August 27, 2018 meeting. Moved. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Personnel, uh, our new staff, um, go to Mr. Michael Lazik first. I'll leave it off. Mm -hmm. So district-wide, so I'm going to say a name, so I'm going to here say a couple of words. Uh, sorry to put you on the spot. Uh, this is Jenna Duckworth, occupational therapist. Hi, I'm Jenna Duckworth. I'm the new occupational therapist for the district, so I'll be at all the schools. Um, previously, before here, um, I started off at Boston Children's Hospital. I was there for two years in the inpatient um, unit and also the chronic pain clinic, um, and then worked at um, the Amigo School in Attleboro for kids with autism for the past three years, which I loved. Um, but I'm really excited now to make the transition to public school at West Bridgewater. I already started to work with the kids, and they're adorable, and mm -hmm. I love them, so I'm really excited to keep, uh, keep working with them. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. <coughs> she was super nervous. She threw up before the committee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Spring Street. Uh, Jameen Brissett, who's an instructional assistant uh, and was not here today. Uh, Victoria Tandri and Robin Wood. Come on. You guys can both support each other. <laughs> <coughs> uh, okay. Hello, I'm Robin Wood. I'm an instructional assistant at Spring Street School in a kindergarten classroom. This is my first position as an IA, and previously I studied liberal studies and early childhood education, and I have loved working for us for for the past few weeks, and I'm excited to keep up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, my name is Victoria Chandri. I am the kindergarten teacher at Spring Street. Um, I came last year from working in a special ed position in Walpole. Um, before that, I was uh, a student at the University of New Hampshire where I got my undergrad in English and my master's in elementary education. Um, and I'm really very, very tired, but um, <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun teaching the kindergarten kids. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it for Spring Street. Thank you. This is in the Roselle McDonald School. So we have five new hires, the Roselle McDonald School. First is Melissa Chmielinski. Good evening, my name is Melissa Chmielinski and I'm the new secretary of the Roselle McDonald School. I am so excited to be here, it's a wonderful district and I'm very happy to be part of the new West Bridgewater family to me. <laughs> um, so thank you and go Wildcats. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine McCaughey. <coughs> Hi, I'm Katie McCaughey. I've been in the district uh, four years now. This year I'm going to be working in grade three uh, with Debbie Honest doing science for a third grade and I'm still title one in the mornings. Uh, I've done title one and long-term clubbing in the past. So, very well, exciting year. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, thank you. Thank you. Next is a pretty familiar face to most of the people in West Bridgewater, mm -hmm. Allie Nicoli. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Allie. I'm an instructional assistant at the Roselle. Um, previously, I went to Fairfield and got my undergraduate. Then I stayed for one more year and finished my master's. And I student taught there in first grade. And I'm excited to be back in West Bridgewater, where I grew up and went to school. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome. Another instructional assistant, Erin Pike. Hello, my name is Erin Pike. I am the new IA at the Roselle for first and second grade inclusion. Um, previously to accepting this position, I worked part-time at Stoughton as a paraprofessional. I graduated from Bridgewater State University with my um, 
mask my undergrad in English with a minor in special ed inclusive practices, and I am currently um, in an online program at Merrimack getting my master's degree in elementary ed. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, another familiar face to us, which was she was a graduate also, Rebecca Smith. <coughs> Hello everyone, I am Rebecca Smith. I am the um, special ed teacher for first through third grade at the Roselle. Um, before that, I graduated from Framingham State with my undergrad and Endicott for my master's in special ed. And I worked as a preschool teacher um, be uh, before becoming an IA for three years, for the past three years. And last year I became a special ed teacher for second grade and now I'm first through third. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. McLaughlin in the Howard School. <clears throat> Good evening. So we're happy to welcome two teachers to Howard this fall. First, um, special education in fifth grade, Christy Lahane. <clears throat> I'm Christy Lehane, um, fifth grade special ed over at the Howard. Uh, previous to this, I taught three years in Fall River at a social emotional behavioral day school. Um, this has been such a great transition to me to see a district that's really such a community and everyone's working together. And um, all the teachers I've met at Howard so far are great. Our new principals. And I'm just really happy to be here in this new district. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. We're off tomorrow. <laughs> uh, in fifth grade, we have uh, Crystal Keedy. Hello. I'm Hi. Crystal Keedy. I'm the fifth grade teacher at Howard. Um, I was a long-term sub in fifth grade last year as well, so I'm very excited to be back this year. I absolutely love it in West Bridgewater. Um, also, Tim is great. I'm not just saying that because Christy said it. <laughs> but he has been super helpful in my transition this year as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to need two subs tomorrow, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know how much you're paying. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Bodwell, the middle <coughs> senior high school. <clears throat> We're excited to welcome some new staff to the middle senior high school. Our first one will be Lynn Bachman for Spanish. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Lynn Bachman. Um, I have taught at, I've taught in Providence for eight years at a small school with 110 students. Then I decided to go to a big school, so I taught 19 years at Brockton High. <laughs> and um, that's where I taught in Pembroke. Part time, and this year I'm teaching here. I enjoy here, I like the atmosphere, nice people, very helpful, a refreshing change. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next one is not new to West Bridgewater. I've been here for a long time, but in a new position, Kelsey Fanchella. I'm Kelsey Francescelli. I'm a new high school instructional aide. For the last two years, I worked as a middle school math tutor, and I student taught with Mrs. Holland in the fifth grade. And I just graduated from Merrimack with my master's in education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Maureen Larkin for special ed. Another one who's not so new. <laughs> Hi, I'm Maureen Larkin. I'm the, one of the special ed liaisons at the high school. Um, I left a job last summer at Time of Christian in Hanover. I've worked there for 19 years. Um, while I was bringing up my children, I was going to school. I got my undergrad in psychology and got my master's last December in. Um, I'm continuing as a transitional specialist to get my graduate certificate. Um, I love the community. I was a long-term sub here last fall, and then I went to Hanover for the spring, and then back. So mm -hmm. I'm enjoying it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Kelsey Sheehan, instructional assistant. Hi, I'm Kelsey Sheehan. Uh, previously to accept the position as an instructional assistant in the seventh grade, I worked for two years in East Bridgewater at their police department as a dispatcher. And then from March of this past year, 
to the end of the school year, I worked with a ninth grade in special ed as a one-on-one -on -one paraprofessional. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In perfect timing, <laughs> <laughs> we have Anna Grisman, uh, one of our world language teachers. <laughs> Hello, my name is Anna Grisman. I'm originally from Russia. I'm teaching French two and introduction French for seventh grade. I came from Melbourne School. I speak five languages. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we might be adding to our program of studies. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thanks, Ma. Um, on behalf of the school committee, I'd like to welcome all of you uh, and in advance. Thank you so much for uh, being here, working with the kids, and uh, good luck. And um, we will take a short recess now so you can get home to your families. Mm -hmm. And we're back. Uh, the superintendent's update, um, Dr. Oakley uh, and the principals on the opening week of school. Yeah, we talked a little bit about the opening because we had a meeting the first day of school, so we got to talk about the first day, but basically we usually like to give you an update on the weeks, the first couple weeks. And we were um, talking this morning at a meeting that we were all together and uh, said that everything that we were in control of, um, as far as running the school, opening up, getting the classes and all that stuff, went pretty smoothly, we feel. Um, the biggest change to the beginning weeks of school this year was the um, having an SRO and the SRO and the police department um, making some changes before we opened school with the one entry and the way that the parent pickup and drop off is at three of the four buildings so to make the buildings more secure so that really was probably the biggest change and what made things a little bit hectic because we would so much has to happen and we have to do so many things and there's so many moving parts when we open school to have that additional change um, was a little learning curve but we've settled in I think um, there'll probably be some things that we'll run into with some of the drop-offs and pickups as um, if we have inclement weather or when the snow flies and then if we get a lot of snow and it's plowed in different places and stuff, uh, especially here at the high school, you know, we'll have to talk to um, the highway department about can they push it back if kids are going to be walking out further to cars and stuff. So it will be different things. It's a little learning curve, but um, for the most part, I think probably the biggest change was at the McDonald School. And I don't know, Keith, if you have any updates on how that's going. Sure. So I have to say I was pretty overwhelmed at the beginning, thinking anyone who's experienced rules on McDonald's parent pick up. <laughs> um, I had it down to a science, and then a couple of days before school started, everything kind of changed. But I do have to say the parents have been extremely flexible and understanding and patient, especially when the staff had to new, know the new way to do things. Um, and the police department was there the whole first week into the second week, and he's been there pretty much every day. Um, to help drive traffic and help the parents know how to pick up and drop off using the same door, just the front door. Um, so I'm really appreciative of all the support the, the school, the parents have given us because um, they sat and waited and patiently for buses to load and unload, which is big. So. Yeah, I think overall the parents have been very understanding and patient about it. Um, and as we go along, if we run into things, then we'll just work it out with the police department. So. Um, but it was just, it was a lot the first weeks of school because there's just so many different things, you know, and everything's new for everybody. But, um, so I don't know, I mean, you're all parents and you, you know mm -hmm. what went on, so I don't know what you think or if our student rep wants to talk about how the beginning of the year <laughs> has gone mm -hmm. so far. Any comments? I think it's been going good. Um, obviously, there's been a little bit of it's different because it's not just like the same flow as normal, but I think it's working out good and everyone seems to have it figured out now. Good. I think over uh, at the high school, that's all I can speak to, is it's very smooth. Um, it's great to see Mr. Bodwell and Mrs. Page out there every morning. We see Officer Thaxter. It's just everyone's relaxed. There's not really any backup. So it seems like it's just moving, whereas before there was a backup. So. I don't know. 
Maybe more kids are taking the bus. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or walking. Or walking. Or their parents are parking down. Or they're too. probably <laughs> parking down. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, where they're picking them up. But it's just it's a one it's a one door entrance. So wherever <coughs> the kids get dropped off, it's irrelevant. It's just one door entrance. So mm -hmm. it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think you know so far, and I know that it's um, all the principals have said that. Um, Officer Thaxter has been very visible in all of the schools um, trying to split up his time. I know his office is here, but he's been um, doing a good job splitting up his time and really kind of helping us get up and running. So I know that. Um, I think it's, it's worked out and he'll be doing, you know, once the logistics and those types of things are under control, I know he'll probably be bringing in more um, types of programs and working with kids in different ways throughout the years as he you know, because we're really kind of, we haven't had an SRO, so we're kind of going through it and defining the program and forming it as we go along, too. But um, so far, so good. I don't know if you guys have anything else. I think it was a good, it was a good start. Great start. Even kindergarten. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I had Dr. Ogley helping me in the beginning, right, because of my first year uh, as Spring Street principal, and uh, it was interesting to see, uh, because so many parents drop off the students at first week of school, there's a lot of crying and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so after the first week, it was, you know, it's been really smooth, the actual pickup and dismissal. Dr. Ogden put on some like, good lines, good caution, temporary caution. <laughs> nice. Parents have stayed behind, so we kind of dismiss the buses. They, they go first, and then we dismiss the parents in the preschool at the same time, right? Because the preschool is using the same door as the kindergarten. Right. 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 So I think change, uh, people are a little afraid of change, but I think it worked out really well, and it's going extremely well. Off of the facts have been every day. So yeah. any issues that could arise is there, so it's, it's great. Yeah. Kindergarten was a little easier because a lot, most of those parents were new parents, so mm -hmm. they didn't really know what the right, yeah. <laughs> last year was. It's harder when you're in a school that has six grades that you've been doing the same thing. Yeah. So our kids have been great too. I mean, we, you know, when you go to yeah. one door, it's like there's still a temptation to go to other doors, and they, they follow instructions like they, they always do. So we're thankful that we have good kids and good parents that are kind of doing what yeah. they need to to keep the kids safe. So we're getting into the groove of things. It's uh, getting into the heart of the school year now, and I think everyone. You know, we, you guys voted last year to start um, before Labor Day, and there were a lot of reasons why, and there were some pros and cons with it, but I know one of the things, um, Ms. Smith, I think you said was, having almost like a soft start, so you have the three days, the four days, and the five days, mm -hmm. and I think that, you know, besides the fact that it was hotter than we've ever yeah. had, <laughs> um, I think that three, four, five, I think people like that and it worked out and you got to ease into things and that first week of the really two and a half days they you kind of got all the paperwork and names and seating like all the that out of the way and then when you come back after Labor Day it's just go for it so um, I think I think it worked out for that so and that's all I have I think anytime that we have change is going to be confusion frustration but um, also, uh, Officer Baxter and um, Chief Flaherty have seemed to do a lot of work behind the scenes and be very prepared for this. And obviously there was changes on the go. So, you know, from uh, basically all of us, I know I can speak for you guys that, you know, to the taxpayers and the people who voted for us to have the SRO this year, you know, thank you very much. It's gonna make the school safer for the kids and the, and the staff. So it's, it's a work in progress, but it's going well. Everybody's working hard, so thank you. All right, on to business, uh, Mr. Michael Lazak, uh, homeschool applications. <coughs> two times in one night, I'm a lucky guy. Um, part of your packets, you have uh, two homeschool app uh, applicants. I uh, did review, uh, they do align to the district policy, so my recommendation is for your uh, school committee to uh, approve these applicants. Do we have a motion to approve? Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bodwell and senior privileges. Uh, maybe Maddie might have some <laughs> comments. <laughs> um, Especially if you voted down. Presented <laughs> to you in paper form. Nothing has changed on the paperwork. Um, you know, we like to grant these privileges to our seniors because we feel that it's something that they earn uh, through their behavior, through their attendance, and through their grades. Uh, it's also something we hold over them if they don't do what they're supposed to be doing. So. Um, if approved tonight, we'll meet with them again tomorrow morning to talk about the procedures once again. This is Paige has been to all power blocks. We've talked to our general meetings. But again, it's uh, something we want to ensure the safety of all students.
So if there's any bad weather or for any reason we will cancel the privileges, um, we'd rather always err on the side of caution. But we look for your permission to grant them starting uh, hopefully tomorrow. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 When did you say it was going to start, Mike? Tomorrow. We'd like no, to let's wait till Wednesday. Tomorrow's going to pour all day. Mm. Thank you. Oh, it is going to be <laughs> monsoon. A miserable right. day. <laughs> be I'm reason. sorry. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, we don't need the first day of this. You, you can go home. You can go home. I wanted the send off. You can go home and tell Mom and Dad that Mr. Holden voted again. No, we're not going to talk to him. No, tomorrow's going to be a holiday. We're not going to want to watch it. We're going to get anyways. You don't want to go out and get wet, trust me. Yeah, we've all kind of been expecting tomorrow to not be a privilege. We do need someone to hydroplane the first day that we go. <laughs> 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 uh, the Howard Roof Project, Dr. Oakley. Yes, the Howard School Roof. So as you know, we're going, we're trying to partner with the MSBA for the Howard Jim Roof Project. It's really the last roof we have to do. I feel like I say this all the time, but it truly is the last <laughs> roof that we need to repair. Um, and it's go. it has to be repaired inside and out. And if you haven't seen it, go take a walk inside the gym and you'll know why it needs to be completely renovated. Um, so Julie Hamlin and I went into the MSBA for a meeting about accelerated repair projects last week. And the timeline now is that we have to send in all of our paperwork, preliminary paperwork by September 27th. Once that happens, then they will um, assign us an OPM who we negotiate with. Then we'll get assigned an architect. They do a schematic design feasibility study once that's done, and it, it's just the gym roof, so it shouldn't take that long. They turn that into the MSBA. The MSBA looks at the plans, looks at what the potential costs are, and makes a decision whether or not they'll go in with the grant program with us. If they say yes, then we have 90 days after that for a special town meeting for the town to approve the money to repair the roof. and the grant would be probably similar in percentage to what our building project was and our probably more closely aligned to what our Spring Street roof was. I think that was a little over 50%, but that could change a little bit because sometimes there's ineligible costs and we don't know what those are until they go through the schematic design process. But it's accelerated. If that happens, then what we would hope will happen is just like the Spring Street roof, kids leave the last day of school and they get going on it so that it's ready for when they come back in September. Um, so tonight's vote is that we figured out with help from the MSBA that the feasibility schematic study should cost about $50,000 or could cost about $50,000. <clears> we did not have time when we got accepted to have a special town meeting for that money. so. I spoke with our town administrator, um, Gagney, and he um, pulled up the paperwork for our Spring Street project, and he said what was done there is we voted to take that money out of our budget, and then we did the feasibility schematic design, and then after it was voted in the winter, we got that money back because it covered the whole project. and that. $50,000 is also reimbursable. So half of that is reimbursable. So the town gets half of that anyway. Um, so tonight, we're just asking for a vote that you will take the $50,000 out of our FY19 budget so that we can send that in, <clears throat> the voting language, the motion, and your actual vote to the MSBA so that we can move forward. Okay. Um, to make the motion uh, that the West Bridgewater School Committee will appropriate the amount of $50,000 for the purpose of paying the costs for the feasibility schematic design for the Howard School Roof Project, 70 Howard Street, West Bridgewater, including the payment of all costs, incidentals, or related thereto, 
and for which West Bridgewater School Committee may be eligible for a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority to be expended under the direction of the School Committee. The West Bridgewater School Committee acknowledges that the MSBA grant program is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the MSBA and, and any cost. West Bridgewater, when West Bridgewater incurs in excess of any grant approved by the by and receive the MSBA shall be solely responsible the West Bridgewater and the amount authorized pursuant to this vote shall be reduced by any grant amount set forth in the project funding agreement that may be ex executed between West Bridgewater and the MSBA. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to approve the vote, appropriate the 50000 for the feasibility schematic design study for the Howard <coughs> School Group project. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome. Thank you. That was a moment. That was a moment. Okay. Um, the Municipal Modernization Act, uh, Ms. Fredericks. the Municipal Modernization Act was adopted and what it did is it took already financial laws on the record for municipalities and school districts and revamped them. So under one of the general laws it has now opened up the ability for school committee to vote to um, nominate one member to sign the warrants. So it could be payroll warrant or bill warrant or both and with that, it would help expedite our bill pay procedure. Once the vote is taken, that <coughs> member and any other member is available to see the warrant um, on file in the school department or once it's turned into the Board of Selectmen's office. And then the appropriate member would come back and give a recap to the fellow board members on the warrant vouchers that have been paid. If you uh, choose to nominate one member to be the designee, um, again, the whole warrant would be available for your purview at any time, and then a recap would be similar to what you had already been receiving, which is the um, vendor detail report, breaking out, out each item as well. Any questions? Awesome. Any questions? Okay. Who's our two designated? We're ready. Another one. Go. Another <laughs> oh, you're going to read all I of this? I am going to read it, yes. Um, I move that Mrs. Sullivan, and if she is unavailable or unable, Mrs. Smith be designated to approve all bills, drafts, orders, and payrolls not otherwise presented for approval at posted meetings to the full board prov provided. However, that if such bills, drafts, orders, payrolls are approved by Mrs. Sullivan or Mrs. Smith, each shall make make available to the board at the first at the first meeting following such action a record of such action and further to ask the, the board of oh, myself William Flynn or Mrs. Sullivan uh, to include the notice of each meeting of the board and each item for such purposes we have a motion moved second all in favor <coughs> aye aye, aye. aye. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Um, I, I apologize. I have to leave. Okay. For a building needs committee. Security. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Holden. Thanks. Thank for you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Uh, Billy will talk. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, assignment of policies, policy 7500, school use property. Um, this is a, the, the policy that's taken out. Uh, we're going to take a look at myself and Mr. Holden uh, put this together with uh, when we uh, built the new school and now that the new fields come on. Um, we, we've taken it out once a year just as a precaution here as we've uh, had some changes as we move. So we're going to take it out and uh, go over it. That's that. Okay. Um, warrants. Uh, warrant number 11 dated September 14th, 2018 in the amount of $332,167.52. Do you have a motion? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
And warrant 11 will have a roll call vote dated September 21st, 2018 for 468,221 and 30 cents. Um, the roll call vote, Mom? Aye. 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 Recuse. That's it for the warrants. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Public forum, members of the audience wishing to address the committee may do so at this time. Audience members are reminded that personnel issues or issues that would violate student confidentiality cannot be addressed during the public forum. Seeing none. Uh, our announcements. Uh, school council meetings. The Howard School, September 19th, Howard Conference Room at 2.45 p.m. October 15th, the Howard Conference Room at 2.45 p.m. Um, we had, do not have dates for the Spring Street School or the Roselle McDonald School or the Middle, Middle Senior High School at this point. Uh, the PTO, September 25th, the Howard Library at 6.30 p.m. Music boosters, October 1st at 6.30. Athletic boosters, October 10th at 7 p.m. Inclusion matters, October 2nd at 6 p.m. The Middle Senior High School Learning Commons. At the Middle Senior High School, September 19th, Citizens Police Academy, 6 p.m. <coughs> October 3rd, Citizens Police Academy at 6 p.m. October 6th, Movie Night Fundraiser at 7 p.m. Senior Projects, all, proce all proceeds going to ALS1. At the Howard School, September 14th, band rental night in the cafeteria and band room. September 19th is picture day. September 27th, curriculum night at 5 p.m. And October 9th, reading is fundamental. The Roselle McDonald School, September 20th is curriculum night at 5 p.m. Uh, September 29th, the Wildcat Bazaar craft fair uh, from 10 to 3 p.m. It's PTO sponsored. October 3rd, the Museum of Science Animal Adaptation, grade three, PTO sponsored. And October 9th, reading is fundamental from 8.40 to 9.30 a.m. At the Spring Street School, October 9th, reading is fundamental, 11 to 11.20, PTO sponsored. And October 9th and 10th, life touch pictures. Um, and then we have one other item here before we go. Um, this Friday night, um, we have our first home football game, Friday night under the lights at 6 p.m. Um, I know the committee, um, I spoke to Mr. Holden before he left, I know he wanted to say the same. Um, we'd like to see if we can start getting some uh, good crowds here at the game. This is Mr. Panos's last season uh, coaching. Um, I believe this is his 32nd year with us. Um, he's done a wonderful job with the boys and um, he's going to be retiring at the end of this year. So see if we can get a good crowd here for all our home games this year to wish them well and then maybe do something uh you know on thanksgiving day because we are home on thanksgiving day mm, and nice. uh, hopefully the boys are playing uh into the next following weekend as well so uh, hopefully we get some people out this friday night uh at the at the football field Great. and awesome. um our next uh scheduled meeting is monday october 15th at 6 30 p.m in the middle senior high school learning commons and we have a motion to adjourn moved second all in favor Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.